You know, when I think back on Haydenville, this is what I remember. The brick plant right across the road from my house. The old company store just down the street. I remember the smell of dad's honeysuckle mixed with the smell of brick being fired. And yep, me playing in the brickyard when I was just a kid back in the 50s. And of course, the Haydenville Depot. We're in Haydenville, where I grew up back in the 1950s. And we're standing here at uh, what was once the magnificent Haydenville Railroad Depot. Had a red tile roof. As you can see, it's, it's over the past two or three years, it has deteriorated greatly and uh, is just a shadow of what it once was. This was a busy depot. Uh, there were passenger trains out of here almost daily, if not daily. Uh, after that went away, it was strictly freight. The last passenger train my dad took a picture of as it was leaving town heading toward Athens. Where I'm standing was the siding. Uh, the camera is up on the, uh, the main line tracks, which are now uh, owned by the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway. But where I'm at was the siding where the boxcars would run in. And behind me here, you can see the loading dock, what remains of that. It ran all the way down through here. And the storage yard for the uh, tile, conduit, and brick that was made here at the brick plant was the area that has become overgrown in here behind me. They would manually load those tile, brick, and conduit into the box cars down here. We're uh, standing here on what was the beginning of the loading dock siding. The uh, caboose here, what's this framework anyhow, is owned by the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway, and they still use the main line here. In fact, right behind this here is where they do their runarounds when they change direction. But there is a picture of me when I was seven or eight years old standing about in here near a switch. It may have been back up the line here just a bit. You can see the plant behind me in that photo. We had great memories here. This was a town that trick or treat, you could go anywhere. You could knock at any door, there was never a concern. I don't think people even locked their doors back in that day. in Haydenville here at where the tracks from the clay mine, which was north of town, came through the tunnel. And this is the end of the uh, structure that held the trestle. And there's a picture of me standing here when I was about nine years old that my dad took and they had just taken the trestle down and all of the buildings were still there across the street of the brick plant. My dad's shop was about where the Miller building is there now. Dad was a uh, machinist for the brick plant for years. And we'll walk down and look at the front of this real quick and get one more look at it right there. Really about the only thing that is left, the uh, South end of the tunnel is still there, but blocked up. 
that that's where the tracks came across right there. Through the magic of one of our commercial drones, here we're flying over the old Haydenville Tunnel. We're flying north, just about over the north opening to that tunnel, and just beyond where US-33 now runs, back up on the hill was the clay mine. Here we're looking at the flagpole that my dad made for the post office many years ago. As far as I know, it's the only remaining item that dad made that is still in use. on the National Register of Historic Places and the uh, Havenville Post Office. Oddly enough, Dad was often asked when someone died to photograph them lying in their home for calling hours. And he even filmed this funeral service going into Haydenville Cemetery back in the 1930s.
we'll walk down the uh, tracks here just a bit. We're uh, here at the old depot again. And again, as we've said before, this, uh, this whole area down to our uh, left here, all of that was a product storage yard with the um, siding down in front of us here and you can see what remains of the dock where the box cars would be loaded with the conduit brick and tile that was produced here. As we walk down here, you can see actually some of the uh, tile that they uh, manufactured. There's still a couple of pieces here and we'll kind of walk over and look at that. Again, the siding began there in the distance. Uh, you can see uh, the framework of a caboose owned by the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway. And the siding began about there and ran all the way down through here. And again, this is where they would load their product for shipment. There's a couple of tile laying here that uh, they manufactured here. There's one right there. And we'll walk on down here a bit. And uh, there's another one right here. And these were glazed tile, glazed conduit. And they uh, actually kind of had some issues at one point in time. Later on, they began cutting the glazed conduit and block. And uh, quite a few workers here ended up with silicosis. The plant itself began about here with the storage yard for the completed product being down to the west here. And then the factory itself began about here with the, the beehive kilns and the smokestacks. A little bit further down the way here there were uh, the buildings where they extruded their product. There was a, a yard office. There was a bathhouse, a powerhouse where there were boilers. All of that was uh, in this area in front of us. Beyond that, on down toward where the uh, pallet company is today, uh, there were more of the beehive kilns and the uh, smokestacks. It was all a very productive area back in its day. Sadly, by 1960, it was over. And we had a front row seat to watch the demolition of the once proud brick plant. Dad had been moved to the brick plant down at the Diamond where he would work until his death in 1968. Once again, let's get a drone's eye view of where the brick plant once stood. We're looking east and about in the middle of our picture was where the brick plant began there were the beehive kilns and smokestacks located in this area. As we back up toward the west, we fly over where many of the buildings on the brick plant were located. The buildings where the clay products were extruded, 
a powerhouse, a bathhouse, a yard office, all of that located here. As we continue to back up to the west, there were more beehive kilns and smokestacks in this area. And again, as we move further to the west, we're now flying over the product storage yard. This is where the brick, conduit, and tiles were stored and where they were loaded into boxcars for shipping. The area that you're looking at here was where the Haydenville clay mine was once located. We're just north of Haydenville, just beyond the U.S. Route 33 bypass, off the end of Company Road. We are uh, just east of uh, Haydenville, and if you can see the sign there in the middle, it says D's Diner. Turn around here and look at the building. A lot of people remember Dee's Diner, but when I see this structure, I think of something else. This was my Uncle John's gas station. It was a pure oil gas station. John originally had a gas station a couple hundred yards up the road there. And when the original bypass of Haydenville was put in. That kind of cut him off from the flow of traffic. So he came down here and he built this station. And uh, it was here, the garage was next to it. And then he actually had uh, a little apartment for himself here. Uncle John ran this gas station until he had a stroke. John spent the rest of his life in a nursing home. This was Uncle John's pure oil gas station. And uh, it went on to, uh, like I said, live another life as Dee's Diner and it operated as Dee's Diner until the new bypass of Nelsonville was put in, which then cut off traffic from old Route 33 here. And uh, that pretty much brought an end to Dee's Diner. Lots of memories, both from uh, my Uncle John's gas station and from Dee's Diner right here in one building. Okay, we're a little bit further east between Haydenville and Nelsonville now. And we had mentioned earlier that my dad, Fred Norris, had uh, continued to work for NATCO after the uh, closing of the brick plant at Haydenville. And uh, 
they had moved dad here. This was the former site of the diamond brick plant. And uh, dad worked here uh, until his death. He was also a machinist here. And uh, this was run by Natco for a period of time and went through numerous owners, I believe, after Natco. And uh, they had a continuous kiln here. Green brick would be fed in on one end. They would be fired and they would come out ready for uh, ready for use on the other end. And they also had their own clay uh, mine here. It was just back up on the hill there in front of us. But uh, this is the former site of the diamond brick plant located between Haydenville and Nelsonville. Many memories here too. Numerous times uh, I was here with dad and got to see the continuous kiln in operation. A fascinating place. The uh, old depot here. Unfortunately, it uh, is about at a state of uh, being beyond any kind of repair work. But I had uh, thought about uh, something that would be pretty cool if they could do it. And that is uh, rail fanning right now is very, very popular. And uh, it's a hobby where uh, guys will go out and just shoot pictures and videos of freight trains and passenger trains running all over the country. I had thought that it would be kind of cool if uh, the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway possibly could salvage material from this old building, especially the red tiles there on the roof and maybe some of the brick and block throughout the rest of the building and construct here a uh, rail fanning viewpoint, a vantage point. Maybe just an open air structure, design the, the uh, roof to look something like this one. how that looks. Maybe use some of the uh, existing tile for the roof and maybe some of the brick for other elements of this open air structure. Put a bench there and put a, uh, a fence along the front edge for safety, but give, uh, give folks a place to come and, and watch the trains go by here on the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway. I think it would be very, very nice if it would be possible for the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway to uh, do a rail fanning viewing area here and do it as a uh, memorial to uh, what the old depot used to be and uh, have something here for people to remember in years to come.